Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is Bill Bender, college football writer and insider for the Sporting News. Bill, nice to have you back on the show. BYU football, eight games in, four and four, with six of those games decided by three points or less. What have you thought of BYU's roller coaster four and four season thus far? When you lose four games by eight points, that's going to hurt. Um, but they've been competitive on all those games. And as, as we've talked about on here before, I mean, looking at the schedule, when you're playing a power, at least one Power Five team from four different conferences, I mean, they've gone out of their way to have this tough schedule, and it looks like that's going to be the way forward. But the good news is, looking at this back half, uh, they should be pretty good in shape for the rest of the way. Bill, when you look at 4-4, uh, four and four, BYU's played some really close games. They're disappointed they're not maybe higher a little bit. Um, can BYU be relevant as a 4-4 four and four team, or do they need to go like 6-2 and two or better to, to make a splash? Well, I mean, as an independent, you're going to have to win six or seven games you can always be relevant i mean the closest comparison would be notre dame they're three and five and they're still relevant i think byu has done enough with their scheduling to be relevant and it's it's interesting i mean they, they're really close imagine if they were seven and one with this schedule a couple of those games would have gone their way heading into this back half it'd be a completely different discussion going into the college football playoff rankings tonight Bill Bender of the Sporting News with us on BYU Sports Nation. What do you think of BYU scheduling as an independent with the formula of, you know, four to six Power Five teams each year and then some of the best of the group of five? Well, I like it. I mean, again, being an independent, it'd be one thing if BYU were in the Mountain West or Conference USA and just dominating that conference. But when you're an independent, it's much like Notre Dame. I mean, I hate to make that comparison again, but just – Looking at the schedule, when I first saw it last year, I, I Ben pointed it out to me last year, and I was like, oh, my gosh, who, who are they kidding playing all these good teams? <laughs> now, now, some of them aren't as good, but that doesn't mean that you, you can't predict what a Power 5 team is going to be three years down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And when you're a Group of 5 team and you beat, like, two Power 5 teams, it's like this big deal, right? Boise State beat Oregon State and Washington State. You know, you know what I mean? BYU's played, like, five or six. Um, so, so BYU uh, has scheduled really tough, and it's been fun. And a lot of these games are on, you know, in ESPN, and that's and that's great for BYU's national fan base. Is is the ideal type of schedule to make a splash nationally more of the Boise State kind of model, or do you think that this has great value for BYU going forward? See, I think it has value going forward because, like, like I said, I mean, you played four close games. So, had BYU been seven and one with that schedule, who knows where they'd be? I, I think they'd be. I mean, maybe in the top, at least top 15, top 10, probably, uh, maybe with that schedule, given that they played, you know, West Virginia, Michigan State, I mean, go on and on and on. Whereas, like you said, Boise, if you're Boise State, Western Michigan, San Diego State, uh, Houston even, they have no margin for error. Houston was out of the playoff the second they lost the Navy. So, so I think this way of doing it is better because you get a little more leeway. The, the committee would recognize that schedule. Talking with Bill Bender of the Sporting News, let's play the hypothetical game here and say that BYU wins their Final Four, which they'll be favored in the Final Four games, and they go to the Poinsettia Bowl and they get a good opponent in either San Diego State or Boise State. Now, I know that's asking a lot and the chips have to fall the right way, but if BYU can win the Final Five, including a game in the Poinsettia Bowl against a good Mountain West team, at that point, would that be enough to get them in the top 25? Uh, it'd be close. I mean, having four losses, I, I would say right now probably not. But who knows? I mean, there, there's two and three loss teams in the power in the top 25 now. So I, it could be close, especially if they got. I think it would take getting San Diego State because they've already played Boise State. We've seen that. If San Diego State were to win the Mountain West, get into that game, you know, play in that game, and, and BYU scored a big win, that'd be great. And I think the chances of them getting one of those really good Mountain West teams are high. Because as our bold projections show, I had Western Michigan out of the MAC getting that uh, group of five bid. When you look at uh, how the bowl matchup could shake out, this is BYU paying attention to the Mountain West is like checking out your ex-wife's Facebook page or something. That's what it's like for <laughs> BYU fans this year. Looking at how the Mountain West shakes out, I believe you have Air Force in the Poinsettia Bowl. Who, who do you think BYU could match up with in that game? In, any one of those teams, like a Boise State Air Force um, San Diego State, or even Wyoming. I've been really impressed with what Craig Bull's done with them. So The safety dance was legit. What's that? The safety dance, that was legit. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, and they're doing a, a really good job. So uh, I think you'll be one of those four. And if if you get that matchup, and like you said, win out, go nine and four. I don't know if they'll be ranked, but it'd be awfully close. I, I mean, it's almost to the point now where ten and three will get you ranked, and nine and nine and four is a really good season with that schedule. Follow him at Bill Bender ninety two Sporting News college football writer. Let's take this discussion national now. Who are your top four college football teams? and maybe a couple of others that could sneak into the National College Football Playoff? Well, I think the, the top four, regardless of order tonight, will be Alabama, I think Clemson or Michigan. You could flip it two and three. I'd probably put Michigan two. Uh, Washington will be fourth. And then, you know, the, the one-loss line is interesting. Had Clemson lost to Florida State, it would have been infinitely more interesting. But I, I think at the top of it is Louisville with Lamar Jackson. And then um, – of course, Ohio State, they're hanging around. They can play themselves back into the playoffs despite that dis- disappointing loss at Penn State. If Lamar Jackson doesn't win the Heisman, who will, in your opinion? Uh, Jabril Peppers. Mm. Uh, I'll, I'll throw it out there. That's a, I, If Michigan wins the Big Ten, if he does some big things in the Ohio State game and they go to the playoff with a 13-0 record, he'll have a chance. I mean, the debate is still Deshaun versus Lamar, and both of those quarterbacks are really good. But I, I, I've said this for most of the season. I, I think both of those guys are great, but I think the best all-around college football player without a doubt is Jabril Peppers. Bill, great stuff. We appreciate the time. Sporting News college football writer. Follow him at BillBender92. We'll talk again soon, and I hope the next time we do talk, we're talking about BYU potentially being ranked and facing a good team in the Poinsettia Bowl. <laughs> I hope so, too, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. You got it. Bill Bender on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline.